record. All right, yeah, it is recording right now. All right, so everyone, yes, welcome sir. to the very, uh, I've always wanted to start a podcast. I, was, I started a podcast a long time ago and did yeah. a couple episodes locally, but I've always wanted to do like actual podcast. And mm-hmm. the whole idea I was thinking of was, you know, you know, you think about the cool names, but then the, what I came to uh, influenced to influence. So it's like, mm. what what influenced to influence you? So mm. the first guest who like brought, even made it happen, it was, was amazing, is the main man Fabrice Shema. Um, yes. Now, he's a person I've personally known now for what, almost two years. Yes, sir. Right yes. about. Um, we met each other through the YMCA where we, you know, where we worked um, working with kids and then learning from each other. We're, we're, both, we're both from Africa. Um, but in this episode, it's going to be good because we're going to just get to really learn about him. Um, I feel like the goal for this podcast is like, you know, if it turns into a podcast, it does. If it doesn't, it's okay. But the goal is not to, yes, we want to interview the biggest people, but also we have really big people here locally who have amazing lives and are influencing others. So Fabrice, just going to go ahead and introduce yourself. And yeah, Pleasure, man. Pleasure. My name is Fabrice. Uh, I've gotten a chance to know Sushi for two years now. Um, and he's a, he's a man, just a, has an amazing heart, you know. I remember when I first met him at the Y, when I, when I first got to start working there, he just came and introduced me like, like he knew me, you know. And so right away, I felt that connection and um, just um, just to see him and grow throughout these years. And, and um, just, you know, he's an incredible man. And, and he's one of actually the first person, one of, it's two people that kind of told me um, to start this podcast and, and try to, show my gift to the world and um and try to influence as many people as i can and maybe hopefully my story can relate to to them um he saw something in me and um he's like hey man i think you can really um benefit from and other other people can benefit from just hearing your story and your mentality and what you have gone through and so um so i want to thank sushi for uh, bringing that light to my life and then bringing that to my attention so uh, now here we are and uh I'm excited to get after it, and uh, thank you for your time, Sushi. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem, man. Thank you. It's you can see, like, it's crazy. You know, it's eight, what, eight forty-three. Some people are still sleeping. We've been up since like we always touch each other at like, six thirty in the morning. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a if, if you're watching this during this time or after, this is the you know COVID nineteen. We're April twenty-first, so we've been in like stay at home. I think it's like March 13th. So um, yeah, yeah. What, have, what, what have you been up to? Apart, you know, from, I guess, the past month and a half. Dude, that's crazy. Like a month yeah, and a yeah, couple yeah. days. Yeah. yeah, first and foremost, I'll, before we begin all as well, I want to thank all the healthcare um, people that are working, yes. um, all the um, UPS people um, that are putting their lives out there. Just, um, you know, I can't imagine. But, you know, I want to pay my respect to them. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, but, you know, um, so what I've been doing uh, just pretty much just trying to learn and um, as much as I can. Uh, I believe there's just power in learning and, and gaining more knowledge throughout the, throughout the course of your life, you know. And so I've been trying to um, learn from people that have that, gone through the, the, the likes of LeBron James, uh, the athletes, the, the, the entrepreneurs, the um, um, just documentaries, uh, reading books, uh, reading stories and, you know, I'm big on those kind of stuff, you know, and so one of the one of the people that I've that kind of that I've been touched by recently is Nipsey Hussle. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we, he passed away last year, um, and it was just kind of I didn't really know him. Um, just a lot of people didn't really know him. I, I obviously, he's a big um, famous guy, and but what he was able to do from his upbringing from growing up in a ghetto and changing the narrative of I'm not going to stay in the ghetto. I want to find my way. And uh, because he's, he was so talented and gifted and he connected with the right people, uh, that, that's the key, connecting with the right people. And he was able to come up and um, and, and, and touch so many lives and just to see his knowledge and, and his, um, his, his love for people and what he wanted to do in the world. Uh, it's, it's a shame that he left us so early, but... Um, you know, he definitely is a big inspiration to me. And uh, um, so I just I want to thank him and uh, RIP to uh, Nipsey. So that's one of the people that have been able to watch his documentaries. And just, I mean, I watched like at least 10 documentaries of just um, self-made, uh, his ownership. Uh, it's him talking about, you know, 
just keep staying true to yourself, you know, no matter what, you know, because uh, um, life is, you know, it's very difficult, you know, so you, you, we lose ourselves, you know, we, we're all human beings, you know, we make mistakes, you know, um, things come up, uh, hardships come up, but as long as you stay true to yourself and who you are um, and you, you stay true to, to your pathway, you, you, you get there, you know, you get there. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's actually really good that you say, yeah, like the stay true to yourself and then also like the come up just cause I feel like that's something that like we, we forget and like, yeah. I like, you know, like t- transitioning to that, like both of us being from Africa, like, I mean, it can be, it can go two ways of us forgetting our, our come up and trying to like, I don't want to say like d- forget that other person, but I think right. like it's important to like remember where we come from. Like, I know like the fact that we're, first of all, just, the fact that we have, like I'm a person, I like to realize small things. Like the fact that we can, I can talk to you. I know even though you're like 10 minutes away from each other, yeah. the fact that we're talking to each other right now, like on a technology where your couple, like imagine if we had this, some people during the world do not even have access to this. So the fact that right, we have right. that is amazing, but um, kind of going on to the come up, I guess, you know, this is a time where letting you know, like your, your, your childhood, I'm not going to say where you came from because you're going to let us know, but just let us know how like your, your come up was your story. Yeah, my story, man, is uh, it's, it's very unique, you know, and, and it's just, I'm very grateful to where I am because of uh, where I came from. Um, I'm originally from Rwanda, actually got Rwanda. And so when I tell people I'm from Rwanda, they automatically have that uh, unfortunate vision of sorry for me, you know, and um, of course, of course the, the, the war that happened, the, the big genocide in Rwanda, um, and so, but that, so going by that, when I tell people about that I'm from Rwanda, I try to give them a light knowing that my country, yes, has been through a lot, but, you know, it's, it's, it's developed to one of the best countries in Africa now, you know, and so because of uh, the likes of our, uh, our president and, and the good people there are there, you know, and so, yes, we have a bad history, but um, we've changed that. We've changed that narrative and, and hopefully people, um, just come and, and, and see what Rwanda is about. So, yeah, I grew up in Rwanda, um, very, very small country in East, Central East Africa. Mm-hmm. And um, just um, life was pretty much, you know, I was fortunate to grow up in a, um, a, a fortunate family, you know, so I didn't have more than, than a lot of people in, in mm-hmm. Rwanda, which I was very grateful for. Mm-hmm. Went to a great school. Um, and, had a great family and around me and the support that, that I needed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was certainly thankful as a kid, you know, and just having to do more than other kids, you know. Um, and so, but soccer, you know, was something that, that always gave me a light in this world, you know, it just gave me the, the freedom of and just getting away from reality and, and just, just playing and enjoying the game as a kid. Um, and so I would pretty much go to school um, in the morning, we have recess, we play soccer, 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 <laughs> recess, soccer. So everybody played soccer since I was going to school since I was four. So, so mm-hmm. that was that was pretty much all we did, you know. Foot- football. <laughs> so we, we call it, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Coming to the States and learning about us and soccer, it was, just, it was a, little, a little different, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, football. Um, so, but before football, it was my uncle. He he was very talented and um, he played in the pro um, in Rwanda and um, and his name is uh, we call him that's what we call him and um, he introduced me to soccer he used to take me to all the Rwanda national team games mm. uh, when they were called Amavudi so if you're Rwandans you know exactly what I'm talking about if you listen to this podcast um, and I remember I was going to the games since I was four or five, just watching the, how they move. And, and just this is the national team. This is our national team of Rwanda, you know. Though they were not good, um, I learned a lot, you know, love for the game. And, and, and so I credit him for introducing me to the, this amazing game to me. And so, um, so going by that, um, went to school, played soccer, had a great family in Rwanda. Um, but before that, my family was we went through the the genocide was I was speaking, and so um, my dad had to migrate over. Um, and, and gratitude to the Red Cross, they, they, 
we came came over to the Kentucky, Louisville, mm -hmm. Kentucky. People always ask why Louisville, Kentucky, because mm -hmm. um, Kentucky actually is one of the biggest refugee camps in the world. So um, if I don't, if I don't mean to pause you right there, but I guess, did you notice? Like, I mean, I, I mean, of course, you can't avoid the fact of a genocide and something like that happening. But like, what were, what were, what were you going through mentally, and just during that time of knowing, or did you know what could happen? Like during that time. I wasn't born then. I wasn't okay. born. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't born. But uh, I'm just listening to the stories mm -hmm. uh, of my family members, what they, what the life was like, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, it's just incredible. You know, so I'm, I'm very certainly grateful every day, you know, to just to have them by them, my side and just to certainly just to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I was in my mom's womb, you know, when she was, when I was wow. in the side. And uh, so I could literally, I'm, I was not, I'm not, literally, I'm not supposed to be here, you know. Wow. Yeah. But uh, through God's way, uh, I'm here, and uh, so I want to um, give thanks to, to, to the Lord above for mm -hmm. just protecting us through all these times, and 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 um, continue to stay with us no matter what. And so, um, but just hearing stories, man, it's, it's, it really touches you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big, I'm a big on family and and history of my family, and so I'm always one of those kids that ask questions. Even today, I was. Um, and like yesterday, I was asking my aunt, you was telling me more about, the, you know, the genocide. What were you guys doing? You know, how, mm -hmm. how was life? You know, just, right. I don't know. I just find that stuff very fascinating. You know, it just, just, it just keeps you more humble and, um, and, and, and grateful. It also keeps you, like, at, in Kenya, we had uh, the British game. And before we kind of had, like, our, I'll say, revolution where we broke away. I remember I used to talk to my mom and ask her the same, not the same exact thing, but just, like, mm -hmm. hearing stories from her where it's, like, you know, there would be, like for us in Kenya, it gets bad when it's election time. Or well, I remember mm -hmm. there was a time where it was just like, there were some places you didn't even drive to just because right. people would just do things to each other. And it's, 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 I mean, it's sad because like they, people, I mean, it's, they believe in something so much that they're willing to do something drastic in a bad way. But yeah, I mean, like uh, you said it the best, stories, it's such like, it's like reading a book. Right. Like when you read a book, it's like you're watching, you're, you're reading the majority of the time, someone's life, mm -hmm. other people's lives through, you, you know, other people's eyes. Um, right. And so, yes, yeah, so, I mean, you said you came, you mentioned Kentucky being one of the biggest refugee states. Mm -hmm. So can, uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, my dad came to uh, in 95, right around when I was born. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he just came um, over to, to the States and he basically um, came with nothing and came up, got acclimated to the culture here in, in, in the States and went to University of Louisville and then he brought us over in 2006. Um, so but during that time, he would come over to, to Rwanda to visit us, um, you know, make sure we're okay, uh, give us the support that we needed and then he'll go back to, to the States to get his education. And so mm -hmm. respect to my dad for doing that and just is one of the, a biggest inspiration in life. Mm, good. And I know it's coming, you know, when we came to America, it's a different, uh, it's a different culture. <laughs> you have right. to either, you can either try to fight it or you can try to kind of mold yourself and mold yourself within it. But, you know, how was coming in and kind of like coming from one culture shock to another, you know, being new in a certain area, um, right. as well as, you know, you spoke about soccer and I know you're people watching this I mean messy. If you're watching this, that's okay. But like, I just for totally for me, for Brees is the best person I know playing soccer. And the funny thing is I've never even seen him go hundred percent. So yeah. that's even the scariest part, but what, you know, what is soccer to you? What, what was the, the difference coming from Africa to America, as well as you always mentioned, it's staying devoted to the gate. What is, what does that mean to you and how did it mean to you when you came here? Yeah, I mean, just, just soccer, man. I, I just can't thank this game enough. You know, mm -hmm. I think, again, I thank my uncle for introducing me to, to the game, you know, and, and and it just just means so much to me. Just the, what he has done for me and, and the, the, the doors has continued to open up for me and the people I've been able to to meet just because of the game of soccer. It's, it's mm -hmm. incredible, right. you know. So um, I want to thank, I can't thank it enough. But just in Rwanda, like I um, uh, alluded to earlier, I just... I mean, all, as a kid, you just want to play and just and have fun and, and, just, and just, just enjoy it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, fortunate and blessed enough to have a 
a skill in here in soccer, uh, which is you know, it was natural uh, out of out of me, and um, and so I was one of the best players growing up in my in my neighborhood and, and, and at school. I was one of the best players, and um, so for me, I, I saw um, soccer as a way for me to go pro and take care of my family. I mean, that's just, that's just the way in, in third world countries. That's what that was the way we think when we're growing up. Uh, we see we see football as as a way for us to take care of our families, and that's my that was always been my goal. Um, and to hopefully play for the national team and if I, if I were to stay in Rwanda. Um, so, yeah. And so whenever I moved here in 2006, late 2007, um, uh, early 2007, you know, um, I didn't know what to expect. All I knew of America was this credible country of rich people, of chocolate, you know. We used <laughs> exactly. To, yeah, chocolate, you know, we used to um, see her, airplanes flying around in, in Rwanda and we used to just say, hey, bring me back chocolate, you know. <laughs> they go to USA, you know, you know, uh -huh. this, we didn't know, I, I wasn't educated on America, man. I just, all I knew it was this rich, crazy paradise world, you know. Uh -huh. uh, and so that's all I knew. Um, and so, but before that, my cousins had, had uh, also came up to, to the States. Mm -hmm. uh, they left in 2000. 2002 or 2003, I believe, just a little bit before uh, me and my mom and, and, and brother. Mm -hmm. And so I had that connection used because it was just telling us, hey, yeah, this is how the life is here. And, you know, but you, you, when you hear something, you just, you know, you just hear it, but you don't have, you don't, you can't really see a, a vision or a picture of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I was just, again, I was just, I was just a kid just thinking like, wow, they, they're living life, man, you know? <laughs> And so <laughs> when I first moved here in 2006, um, it was my first time going on, a, on a, an airplane, you know? It's yeah, just, yeah. Very, very nice. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh. Then especially when you take it off and, and yeah, your ears start to pop. <laughs> I was just thinking, man, like, is this how people go to heaven? You just exactly. Go, you know? <laughs> yes. You just take off in a flight and you just never come back, you know? <laughs> you know? Uh, but you know, of course, I was I was I was excited, but also nervous because uh, um, I didn't know what to expect, and all, and also I was leaving my friends behind, and I was leaving soccer behind. I just didn't know when I would play soccer again. That was most the most important to me, mm -hmm. um, because I didn't know if, so if soccer was big in America. I didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I would know it was soccer in, in Rwanda. It was mm -hmm. big. That's all we did. And so when I came over in 2006. Um, I, first came here where my cousins were living, Raleigh, North Carolina. This is where, uh, surprisingly, that's where I ended up in this wow. for now. Uh -huh. uh, and so they were here living and we lived, we lived with, uh, with them for about two months uh, just to get acclimated to the culture. And, uh, and you know, my family's big, you know, and, and we're big on family and we, we stay together. And so mm -hmm. that's how we grew up in a big in a big house and we all lived together and my aunts, you know, uncles, just my grandma. Uh, taking care of all of us, so it was no, um, it was not a big deal to come here and then just stay, continue to stay with them for a couple months while we get ourselves uh, situated. And so, right. my dad was in Kentucky, so we joined him in, in Kentucky in uh, late 2007, and that's where life started. And um, honestly, when I came here, man, I was just, I was just like, wow, you know, I was nervous. I didn't speak the language, you know, um, you know, all I knew was welcome, you know, you know, mm -hmm. everything was. Welcome, yeah, thank you, everything, you know, um, just thank you and welcome, that's it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when I came here, I was just like, man, where's soccer? Where's soccer? I didn't, I didn't see nothing, you know. In Rwanda, you, you go outside the door, people are playing pickup, you know, just soccer, right. soccer, soccer, you know, this is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And when I came here, I was, everybody stayed in the house, you know, and it was, just, it was just such a, a culture shock for me, you know. Mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't used to that. Uh, people watch TV here more, we didn't. And, and we're, we're fortunate in Rwanda, um, you know, we had a TV, but we didn't, because we had a TV, just because we had a TV doesn't mean we stayed inside, which was, we were, majority of the time, we spent outside, you mm -hmm. know, doing whatever and just living life. And so it was just completely different, you know, and, but back in my head, I continue to ask myself soccer, soccer, soccer. So I didn't play mm -hmm. soccer for, I was, came here when I was 10 and I didn't play soccer for three years. Oh, wow. So that's a big three years that I missed. Yes, you know? that's and, a lot you can do. And I, be, I believe that I, I, that's why that hurt my development, you know, because I, and, you know, just, just being a coach now, I know the importance of development 
at that age, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, because I didn't know, I didn't have no access to, I didn't have no resources. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know, you know I just didn't know anything. And, but, you know, I just believe that, you know, God works mysterious ways and um, growing up here and I came, um, so just going to school like a normal kid, you know, mm -hmm. try through ESL, English mm -hmm. is a second language, mm -hmm. you know, yep. and just take those classes. I think I, took, I had like two or three classes. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> throughout the day. And so, um, uh, before that, before that, they were put, put in school, what the, the system in America is, is. Um, I kind of don't like it, you know, but at the same time, I respect it. You know, when you, when you come here, in, especially English as a second language, they give you a test to just to see what uh, the grade school you're going to be in. Um, so I was actually held back. I was supposed to be going to fourth grade, uh, but I was put back in third grade. In Rwanda, yeah. I was are basically finishing up third grade. I was going into fourth grade. Yeah. Um, but because my English was so poor, they gave me a test. I mean, I mean, of course, I was not going to pass that it was test. Designed so. to, yeah. And so they pulled me back to third grade, just kind of, um, you know, it was unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, so I went through it um, and um, just continued going to school in ESL, ESL, ESL. That's literally how I learned English and watching cartoons, you know, speaking mm -hmm. of TV, you know, the new culture, just staying inside watching yeah. cartoons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that's pretty much how I learned English, man. And, and you know, and staying around my family and, um, and it's, that's, that's pretty much a little of my upbringing in America. And I like, and, and thank you for sharing. And one thing that I did notice that a key word that you would say is like acclimating, acclimating, acclimating. You never, um, yes, you were in new circumstances, but you never took those, like you never let those circumstances defeat you, but you instead adapted to them and acclimated to them. I mean, a great example is what's happening right now in the world that like, again, April 21st, to think that, we can't like if you really think about everything that's happening first of all it's a good it's it's even though it's for, like you just, just said thank you for everyone right now who is the people at walmart the food line all these grocery stores doing overtime right. overtime yeah the, the people in the medical industry but like there's i mean i talked to someone they're like man you know i'm not able to see my friends and and, and hang out or go out and do this stuff and i was like yes even that's important but you know I'm, again we're not, we're not we're not from here but Imagine when they have World War One, World War Two, all these wars. Somebody would be knocking at your door saying, yes, yes. "Here's here's number four. We're going to go to Germany." Like imagine to me, I was thinking about that. I was like, "This could be a whole lot worse." Like it's it's, but it's like you really acclimating to this time and and not you know we could easily be sleeping in and wake up at one p.m. every single day and stay up till two. But waking up, maintaining our schedule, still learning and acclimating. Right. And, that's, I feel like that's the that's the key, and even with soccer, you know, it's it's, it's, it's the key to acclimating, pivoting, um, and even pivoting right now is next is acclimating to you've come here, you've acclimated to U.S. as well as combining where you are from Kent, from Africa, um, in Rwanda, and with you know football is now soccer, and you've yeah. kind of taken that break. You, you've gone to a great school, and you've right. done amazing things in college. So, what was that experience for? college recruitment as well as the school that you're going to let us know um where you went to and you know the story that right. that everything going from from that school right 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 um but i just for me i believe that behind every every man every every person there's always somebody you know that helped them and they, you know and for, and behind me there's a bunch of people that have helped me and to be who i am and the support that i've been given and you know, uh, i wouldn't be here without them you know, and so I want to res respect all the people that, that have just continued to support me, even just when I was down, you know, um, I'll speak, I'll speak more of my uh, downfalls and my uh, trials and tribulation in life um, later on. But, you know, just going through, um, like I said, I was fortunate, you know, I'm blessed enough to have, you know, um, some soccer skills and, uh, you know, and, and I, I want to just, just share that with the world and um, just very thankful and so having those soccer skills you know it was only a matter of time before I, I got unleashed uh, I found an opportunity to to show off my talents mm -hmm. and so I went I was able to transfer over to uh, my dad we come from a very Catholic family mm -hmm. and so we're going to a public school then uh, when I came here and uh, all the way up to I believe um, I believe fifth grade, yes, 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 fifth grade. And 
my dad had known one of the pastors of one of the Catholic schools in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, he, the school is called Mother Good Counsel. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, um, I'm a pastor at this school. Um, it's a private school. And, um, you know, I, I can see what I can do for your kids. And I went there and they had soccer. And, but also they had American football. Mm. And so that's pretty much how, it's funny because that's how I was seen in first place. Um, <laughs> Football. And be, my, my, my brother, my younger brother, Pasfik, was wanting to try out for American football. Mm -hmm. I just tagged along, you know, hey, just go in and see what's about. And I get there and they start asking me questions. So, where are you from? You know, I'm like, yeah, I played soccer in Rwanda. You played soccer? You know, so like, <laughs> you want to kick the ball? You know, and so I was like, uh, sure. And so I, I kicked the ball and I, I think I kicked it like 40, 50 yards. <laughs> and uh, that was pretty much how they asked me to come on the football team. <laughs> funny, not many people know, but I did play American football when I was young. Uh -huh. you know, and wow. so that's pretty much how I started playing it. And that was my way of and, and, and getting um, into the system of soccer in America. Mm -hmm. And so I came to the school and I just amazing school, private school, Catholic, um, which my family was just more happy about is the fact that it was Catholic and, and private school. You just, you just can't beat that. And so they took care of my family and, um, very, you know, and I came, played American football for, I think, uh, half the year. And then soccer was in the spring. And so I tried out for soccer team. And that's when I just took off, you know, um, and I went, those three years that I missed um, you know, certainly were a big miss to my, to my development, but uh, because I was so naturally talented, you know, uh, just, just came up, just came natural to me. And I just came, um, started playing. And one of the kids on my uh, middle school team at the Mother Good Council, with that school that the Catholic school I was going to, he was, mm -hmm. our, he was on, a, um, on a, a club team. Mm -hmm. And we were good friends. It was like, hey, man. What's, um, I didn't mean to interrupt, what's club for the people who who have no idea, like what, you know, there's yeah. people who live in America and don't even know what club it's called, is. Yeah, it's called Louisville, uh, Louisville Soccer Alliance. Okay. And it's a small club in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my, was my first club that I played for here. And um, small uh, compared to other clubs in, in Kentucky that I will continue to mention in a little bit. And so he suggested that I try out. I came in and I tried out for the first day, the first 10 minutes, these guys wanted me already, you know? Mm. And just, again, just my natural ability and it's just my hunger for the game and just my dedication is just, you know, it was, you just can't miss that, you know? And I just, I just felt like, well, I'm big on first impression. And so whenever I get an opportunity to prove myself, I always make sure I prove myself. Mm -hmm. And so the first truck, tryout they, they basically invited me on the team and so that was the way I got into the system of again another uh, of club soccer mm -hmm. and which later on I went to the, the ranks of driving on which is another, another club that I'm certainly thankful for just doing well in Louisville Kentucky uh, um, Ali is the, is the owner there he took me in and helped me out to, and um, and I developed so much as a, as, a, as, a, as a soccer player but also as a young human being mm -hmm. um, growing up and and then I went to uh, United, uh, which is, I think for me, that's where uh, my development took off. Mm -hmm. um, just, the, just the ranks of getting coached by such amazing coaches like that, Brazzo, Mohamed, and Tabani. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing people, amazing people. They were tough, you know, um, but I think, you know, that toughness was very genuine and it was, it was, it was all love, you know, mm -hmm. because they saw something in me and they, they didn't want me to waste it. Right. You know, well, that's one of the things that um, I continue to try to uh, portray and and, um, and teach the younger generation. Don't feel like I'm coming at you. I'm, I'm coming at you when, I co when I'm coaching at you because I care about you. I just don't want you to waste your talent, you know, and, and waste the opportunity to get better every day. Uh, because certainly there's, you're not the only one trying to get better, trying to make it in this world. And there's a million, million, trillion kids trying to, because trying to make it and, and, and and change their life in, right. because of this game. And so I, I want to, you know, I think that those people and, and the, those amazing coaches that pushed me to where I am and, and, and that believed in me. I think, I, I think that's, that's the, the most important for me. Um, and the, the reason why I wanted to go into coaching is just the power of believing somebody is, is, is amazing, man. You know, and just seeing something in them and, how, and, and giving that confidence to know that they can do it, you know. 
Um, so thanks to them. And, and later on, um, United turned into, not, not really turned into, but it just got bigger, kind of switched over to Rover City. Um, that's where a bunch of the, the best talent in Louisville, Kentucky went into at my age at the time. And so... How old were you at this time? I was about uh, 16, 16, 17, you know, and, you know, I was playing with amazing talent, you know, you know some, of my, some of my best friends still today, the South Africans, uh, Lindo, Napo, uh, Benelli, uh, Waka Goodba, Bo Lafa, uh, Connor White, you know, uh, Neymar, Jared Kemper. I mean, a great, amazing talent in Louisville, Kentucky, and we're all on the same team. I mean, it just, yeah. and that helped me for me uh, just to, become even better as a, as a player uh, because of everybody there just wanted to get better. Then, you know, it was, it was, it was tough. It was intense. It was everybody fighting for their own, every training, mm -hmm. you know, or, or tackled, whatever, you know, yeah. it's just that's how my training was. And that's how the, 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 the coach, when his uh, Brazzo was coaching us uh, and, and Tabani was coaching us and Muhammad and it just, it was all, it was all in, you know, if you don't fight for your own, you, you, you're out the team, man. So, you know, yeah. and, and that's the way in life is, man. You gotta fight every day. Every day you gotta fight and prove yourself because once you get comfortable, that's when you lose it. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Yeah. Say yeah. that again. Mm. So uh, you know, credit to to the amazing coach and, and, and coaching and and I was I was fortunate enough to get it. And the, the the club was um had some one of the resources where going to some big uh, tournaments and um, get seen by the, the other college coaches. I didn't know anything about the, the recruitment process, but, uh, but, you know, like having that support behind me, the coaches and, and, and like telling me, Hey, you know, this college coach is coming, you know, Hey, first impression, first impression, first impression, you know? And so one of the tournament that I went to, uh, he was back in 2000, I think, yeah, 2016 or 2017. I can't remember what year, uh, but it was here in Richmond, uh, not not here, but close by Richmond, uh, Virginia, mm -hmm. three hours away, two hours away from here, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And um, we, I was, we went there as a team, and we just kind of, we we're a really good side, you know. I mean, just very talented players, or, and um, we pretty much destroyed everybody because they, they, they put us on a kind of mediocre uh, level, and mm -hmm. which is I, I didn't I didn't really like it because I want to play against the best. Exactly, so, you know, get the best out of somebody, and, and that's how you develop. And so they could put us on a mediocre level, I, I believe, and so we just destroyed everybody. And I mean, we were smacking teams like eight zero, nine zero, and a big tournament where college coaches are coming to see, you know. You know, it was big. And so because we were able to bring so much attention, I think uh, a lot of coaches came to see just uh, who we are. I mean, it's just our style of play, man, was unbelievable, just simple. The United, we call it the United way or the Rovers way, mm. which basically was kind of an integration of both clubs coming together. And, but the same, the, the philosophy never changed. Just simple football, you know, playing together and we lose it, we get it back. And we just wanted to keep the possession. And we want to control the game as much as we can. Um, and so because we played so well and, and did it the right way, a lot of players got a chance to be seen and the talent got a chance to be seen mm -hmm. in the right way. Um, so, yeah, man, at that tournament, that's where I got seen by University of Virginia. Uh, you know, it just they came and, and one of the head coaches actually was there. And, oh, wow. Uh, did you know? Yeah. Did you know the head coach was there? No, I did not know. I did not know. I, all I knew was a bunch of coaches right there. Just focused. Yeah. Just focused. I mean, I'm just big on uh, – I, I think when I play the game, I, I almost kind of take everything personal. You know, I just, I just want to be the best. You know, I want to dominate. You know, I want to – I just just simply to be the best, you know. And so yeah. when I was – every game I go into, I'm going hard. Every training, I'm going hard. I want you to remember me when, when the whistle blows, when, when the training is done. You know, I just – I want you. I want you. You know. I want you to remember me exactly who, what the, what I did and and how much how hard I went. Mm -hmm. And so, after the training, uh, my, my actually my coach came up and said, "Yo, Virginia came and asked. You know, I, was, I didn't know anything about Virginia, but uh, some of my teammates uh, knew how big of a school it was. So Virginia basically is like going to Duke uh, for basketball, UNC. Oh wow! Basketball. I did not even know that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is probably the best soccer program in the country, and you know, one of the few, uh, the best. Um, um, 
uh, not not few, but many, I think. Uh, but it's it's up there as the best. And it, it, I mean, they you know the, the history speaks for itself. You know, they've won um, seven national championships. But with one of them that was I think, uh, fortunate enough to be there uh, my freshman year. So I went through the recruiting process and start talking to the coaches and you know um but one thing that i feel like for me that um because it was such a big school and the reputation came um and, and the reputation spoke volume i kind of got attracted to, to the school so quickly and not necessarily um use take advantage of my resources that mm -hmm. the resources the other schools that wanted me mm -hmm. um you know I, you know i had Top schools wanted me, you know, like Indiana, Xavier, um, Louisville, which I, I was uh, wanted to stay home, but I also wanted to stretch myself and, and grow and get out, my, get out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Which is why one of the big reasons I went to UVA. Um, and so, I want to if you if you're a young player, listen to this. You know, it, I always uh, the time hasn't come from some of the kids that I coach because they're still young to the recruiting process hasn't come yet, but. Mm -hmm. um, once it comes, if you listen to this, I think it's, it's important to, to make sure you uh, use all your resources and go on, go, all, go on all those recruiting trips, you know, all those schools that want you, visit them, give them a visit just to see, you know, it, it's like, you know, testing the water, you know, just it's like having a relationship, you know, and so if it doesn't work out, you know, try another one, you know, and, and it's just, um, so it's important to make sure you utilize your resources and mm -hmm. not cut somebody off because you just want one school you know and so i think uh ended up working out uh, uh for sure but you know if you listen to, to this as a young player trying to figure out what's the next for you in a college recruitment or if it's or if you even really really talented and and have an opportunity to go pro hey then go ahead uh but if you decide to go to the college uh, uh recruiting and and, and want to play college ball, make sure you take advantage of resources. And I, and I like, sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, just piggybacking out that, I like how you mentioned that just because like there's, you know, like we see it as, you know, we see it when we were at the Y, like the resources, whether it's the resources themselves or it's the people, like the people itself, like you mentioned it, like the first impressions that you make, yeah. can either make or break like and yeah. and it's crucial and it, and it doesn't necessarily mean you know sometimes i i, I used to do this a lot in middle school and high school like it doesn't necessarily mean for first impressions you have to be someone else but it's like if you be your true self like you mentioned yeah. as long as you're yourself like that's it because then it's it's i mean it's always first impressions because you never know we talk about it all this time excuse me is that you never know who you're talking to I mean, you never know who you're talking to, but when you're talking to who's people, watching? Who's yeah, watching? who's watching? And that's that's one thing we always told what is it we're at a, it's like a fishbowl. So it's like you, and of course we don't do this to get, you know, some people do this to get a reward, but they're always talking to people in a certain way to get a reward. But if you just treat people, you exactly. know, it's cliche, treat people how you're supposed to be treated. You, you yeah. never know. We've had, you know, we've had conversation stories when you talk to someone and someone, you know, tells, oh yes, I know this. And it yeah. opens up a flood of opportunities that, if you did not talk to this one person, that couldn't have happened. Right. Um, so, you know, I'm making sure we're respectful time. We've got a couple of minutes, about 10, 10 minutes left, but don't want to rush everything. But what's, you know, what I know right now you're um, coaching, you know, I know you've told me you've adapted even your coaching right now during the, you know, the COVID-19 times, yeah, yeah, yeah. but with coaching um, and coaching and success, what, what does that mean to you? You've already answered what's the, you know, what's the advice for the younger generation, which is amazing, but, you know, kind of le leaving off the last thing is, you know, everybody wants to go pro. Everybody wants to have the medals. Everybody wants to have the, right, right. you know, be Messi, be Ronaldo, have a, have a shoe after you. Right, but right. there's a difference. You have a, a different bliss to yourself where it's okay not to go pro. So what is, you know, why did you do the coaching side instead of going pro? And also lastly, you know, what is success to you? Right, right, right. Uh, that's a great question, Sushi. Great question. Um, you know, to go by what's um, just what success means, and also what coaching means to me. Uh, I want to give credit to my to my life um, mentor and just just my biggest inspiration in life. His name is Brad Davies. He was my high school coach. Uh, to today, I mean, we talk like at least once or twice a week. You know, uh, just. I like to pick his brain, you know, what he's thinking, um, because he's just so, he's full of knowledge, you know, and just so much wisdom that I, just, every time you talk to him, you're just like, wow, 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 you know, 
-hmm. And so um, he coached me when, you know, my high school, you know, and he, but, but besides that, he came, he, he developed me as a human being, you know, yeah. always taught me to do the right thing. And, uh, and, and, and also he wasn't afraid enough to tell me the truth, you know, which is, I think one of the importance of coaching and when you want to um, help somebody that's younger, you know, be honest with them and, and let them know, Hey, yes, you are talented, you know, yes, you have, you, you know, you, you have great skill in soccer, but you know, that's not, if, if, if you don't make it to the pro, it's not the end of the world, you know? Mm. Um, and I, I get it, you know, you, some of the young players gonna um, feel like, you know, it's, it's I'm taking it this the wrong way, but you know, there's more to life than soccer, you know? Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that because I didn't, um, I didn't make it to the pros, but I feel like I, I still made it, you know, I still, uh, because I, I, um, I got to where I wanted it to eventually be, which is coaching uh, because of this man that, that, that was able to take a chance on me and believe in me at a young age. Um, and so one of the things that he always um, continued to emphasize and, and uh, his philosophy was, he was big um, um, on just kind of quotes, you know, and um, one of the quotes is, is one of the former UCLA basketball coach um, was, was a star. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he says, success is, oh, let me even say, so success is the peace of mind that is the direct result in knowing you did your best to become the best you, to become the best of, of you, that you were capable of becoming. Mm -hmm. Success is the peace of mind in knowing you did your best, in knowing you did your best to become the best that you are capable of becoming, you know. And so, you know, when, when he said that, you know, and he continued to say that all, all the time. And I didn't quite understand what that meant. You know, it's just all, all I saw as a young kid, I'm going pro. I'm going pro. You have the shoes. You have the shoes. You ought to be on FIFA. <laughs> I'm going pro. And so, so. For me, when I when I'm coaching the other kids, you know, I, I'm honest with them. Hey, not everybody's going to pro. Not everybody's going to, you know, go to a, you know go to college or and play pro. You might not get that scholarship, but at the, at the end of the day, if you put in the work and, and 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 give everything you can to this game and whatever you do, give everything you can, everything you have, and don't cheat the game, and don't cheat whatever the process you're going through. And if you do that, man, you know. That's all you you have the peace of mind and knowing that you did your best, you know, you, 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 you rest and knowing that I, I didn't cheat. I didn't take things for granted. You know, I didn't, you know, I didn't cut, cut short corners, you know, I put in everything that I have. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I, I like to do, um, you know, teach the younger generation and just don't take anything for granted. You know, every day is, is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to, 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 to be better, to prove ourselves and, and to, to just simply be the best that we can, you know, and, and give everything that we can. And so that's, that's what gives me peace knowing that, Hey, yes, I didn't uh, quite make it to the pros, but for me, I found my, my, my purpose in life, my calling in life, which is coaching and, and just making a difference in this, in these younger generations. Um, this is, this is for me is it gives me more, um, just more joy and more uh, satisfaction in knowing that I'm making a bigger difference as coaching, right? And rather than playing professional, you know, it's just the, the many lives that I continue and the many kids that I continue to meet and, and, and work with, you know, and just, they all come from a different culture, man. It's just, and I think that's one of the, the just, uh, just I, mean, I just, I don't know what to say, but it's just the privilege that I have just to, be on a, such a big platform and, and, and utilize what I have and, and which is um, just sharing my gift, you know, and, and giving back what others have given me, which is, you know, and certainly is the, is the least that I can do. And then your second question, um, success, success, you know, that was your question, second question, right? Mm -hmm. Sushi? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I tied it, I tied it into it. Uh, what is, you know, what does that mean to me? You know, you know, I think I think for me, some we can we get caught up in that everybody has to do this. Everybody has to be a um, a, a, a businessman. Everybody has to be a, a CEO or a, a, um, a, a doctor, and, and just all this 
goals and all these visions that the, the society that society expectations that we that we come up across but i think everybody can be successful in their own ways mm-hmm. you know and, and it's important to find what you're passionate about and what you and what's your purpose in life mm-hmm. you know and and for me that's that's my success because i found my purpose in life um and i found my passion and, and when you do everything the, with all your heart you're always going to be successful you're always going to be successful you know but if you if you just do it just to do it you're going to end up quitting you know so i encourage all you, everybody that's listening to you know to, to take this time especially this time that we have that to meditate and figure out who you are, you know, and what you want to do, what you want to give to the world. And, and once you do that, pull your whole heart into it, whole heart into it. And, and if you're passionate enough, man, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Every day is going to be, you're going to feel like you, you're on cloud nine, you know, because you're doing, it's, it's, just, it's an amazing feeling, you know, when you, when you do something with, with a purpose and, and with, with so much passion put into it. And so that's my success. Yeah. Yeah, that's some yeah. um, that's some great yeah. it's only nine and i'm ready like i'm that's i mean again first of all you know as we wrap up is just absolutely thank you for just taking this amazing time and and it's yeah, thank you and Lucy. thank you for initiating this because like yes even though i've known we've known each other for the past you know for the past couple of years it's still being able to learn more you know there's a difference between knowing people and really knowing people um and of course you know sharing heritage of where we're from going through different circumstances and, and having common goals and things that we want to achieve so thank you for sharing that um to the people watching thank you for the amazing messages that you told them um yes. it's been a blessing to get people you've seen me like i i've get, gotten to see him grow i when i say opportunity it's like the opportunity because it is opportunity to get to see someone grow um where he's working not only you know for himself, you know, he's working for himself, but he's also working for himself so he can work better for others, where that's being able to impact people um, on their personality. Because at the end of the day, you know, yes, he does, he, ta- he does teach the skills. He does teach how to cut, how to, how to shoot better, how to be this. Okay. But a lot of it, we talk about it all the time. The most important part is, you know, your mindset. Mindset yeah. is, mindset and the heart is important yeah. because you can have the best skills, but if you don't have the mindset and the heart yeah. to put, you know, to put those skills into it, it's not going to work. You know, right. a lot of people think to themselves, oh, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm the best on the team. I don't have to work on myself. And it's, we talk about it. The moment, the moment you stop, when you think you've learned it all, that's the moment you've learned nothing. Nothing. So, oh. um, as we leave, and you've already shared some final words, what's, what's you know, what's, um, where can people find you on, on, on social media? Um, yeah. And, where, you know, what can they be looking forward to next? Yeah, um, you can find me on my coaching page on the FS uh, underscore D training. Uh, okay. I'll put it up uh, somewhere yeah. right here. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Fabrice Shema developmental training. Um, mm-hmm. the key word is developmental, you know, and because I, I believe that there's a power just development, you know, it's just not even just soccer and just as a human being, you know, mm-hmm. um, trying to get better every day. Um, you know, I, I use my, my big, uh, Emphasis is on one percent better, you know, one percent better. You know, I, I'm going to touch base on that because there, there's power in that. You know, when you when I'm coaching my kids, you know, they, I, when I say one percent, you know, better is God might could think, okay, we're gonna get better as a soccer players, you know, which is what we're here for, for sure. But mm-hmm. I think what I, for me, what I challenge them when when we're done is to get better outside of soccer. You know, one of the things that you can do, you can. You can literally just get up, um, say you, you don't normally fix your bed. Mm-hmm. You getting up and fixing your bed the first thing in the morning, you just got better. Yep. You just got better. You know, you getting up and say, I'm going to take the trash out. You know, instead of mom coming to your door or your, your, your room and say, did you take the trash out? When's the last time? Mm-hmm. You just taking that initiative and, and taking it out. You doing going above and beyond to stretch yourself and get your comfort zone and doing something. You just got better. You know, and so and so for me, I, that's what I, I thrive to do every day. Um, trying to find something that I can do to continue to to to, to stretch myself um, and, and grow, you know, and challenge, you know. And so that's one of the things that for me that uh, I encourage anybody that's watching this to find anything throughout the day, you know, to, that you can improve on. You know, and and do it with with love too, because when you just do it with it's it's all fake, you you, just, you won't you won't make it. You know, 
just it's like it's like cooking for somebody you know um if you're gonna cook store for somebody you know do it with love you know mm -hmm. otherwise the, the food won't taste the same mm -hmm. you, know? you know it won't mm -hmm. taste the same and so put your whole heart into it do it with love because that's that's all we can give to the world love you know and so yeah that's my two cents and that's my uh final piece uh again man i want to thank you sushi for taking the time and you know uh, it's 9, 9.31 in the morning, you know, I've been up to 6.30 trying to uh, plan, you know, what to expect from me is these big things, continue to try to influence as many lives as I can, uh, kind of trying to make a difference. And I think it's the, the most important is to utilizing your platform and, and impacting as many lives as you can, you know. And so I, I, I realize I'm in a very unique position. And so I am, I am I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to do the best that I can. And, and you know, trying to continue to give to the younger generation, you know, as 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 much as I can. You know, that's that's uh, so. What to expect is continue to. Um, I'm gonna have more programs. Uh, I was hoping to have a, a summer camp this summer, but due to COVID-19, um, um, right now it's on pause. Um, so I've been doing a lot of Zoom training, um, a lot, lots of. Um, um, online trainings, FaceTime, and also creating my own videos. And some of the kids that, that I have, some of the top players that I have, they've been um, and kind enough to, to come out and, 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 uh, and do some drills for me while I'm videotaping me. I'll be able to share them with you guys. So some of them are on my page and some of them I share with people that, that want it exclusively. Mm -hmm. you know? And so that's some of the things that I'll continue to do during this time that we're away from each other. Mm -hmm. um, but socially, you always going to be with, I'm always going to be with my, 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 my kids and, and the kids that I work with and, you know, and I text them throughout the day or throughout the week, just checking out on them, just making sure their mindset is right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, you alluded to it earlier, just that, that mindset, you know, continue to, to push through even when that adversity comes, you know, and uh, that's ad adversity. I use that word because that's a word that every, every single kid of, that I coach understands. You know, and, um, you know, every day, there's always something that comes up every day, every day, every day, mm -hmm. something's going to push you back. And, but your mindset pushes you through, mm -hmm. you know, pushes you through, you know. And so um, that's something that um, I've been able to um, make sure I tr keep track on my players, their mindset, how they are, how they're developing, how they're, you know, they're staying, they're staying cool, they're staying uh, and believing in this. And most important, they're staying true to themselves. Perfect. Perfect. Man, I just ended it the best way possible. So everyone listening. Sure. Yeah. I mean, now we can't stop. Um, so I guess keep you in, in tune for what we'll be doing next. But other than that, Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and pause and we are all good. Absolutely. Thank you, Sushi.